Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm going to be discussing Bob McKenzie's mid-season NHL draft rankings and five takeaways that we can get from it. Now if you don't know, Bob McKenzie puts out a mid-season and final consensus draft rankings every single year and today he just bring out his mid-season ones where he talks with multiple NHL scouts and gets where they think these prospects will go. And in the newest one there was a lot to unpack here today. So. What were his rankings? Where does he think each prospect will go according to NHL scouts? And what are the main takeaways that we should get from it? Watch till the end for all rankings and my opinions. And of course, subscribe if you're new. Now, Bob McKenzie has officially released his top 62 for the mid-season draft rankings, and as I said before, these draft rankings are consensus ones. He talks with a lot of scouts, both in the European and North American leagues, NHL scouts as well, to get an idea of where these guys will end up going. Whether it's the mid-season or the final rankings that he puts out, these are usually very, very accurate to where these guys are going to end up. Obviously, for the first couple of picks, there's no surprises. You have Alexi Lafreniere, number one, and Quinton Bythe field number two. But after that, it's pretty much chaos throughout the rest of the rankings. That's exactly where we get into my first takeaway in today's video, the first out of five. And again, after the top two picks is where it gets insane. Now, starting with our first takeaway here, it's that Tim Stutzel and Jamie Drysdale are getting a lot of attention lately. Now, of course, it goes Lafreniere, Quinton, Byfield, one and two. But then at number three and number four, it goes Tim Stutzel and Jamie Drysdale, respectively. Now, these numbers right here, Stutzel number three and Drysdale number four aren't too surprising, but again, these are really accurate to how scouts are feeling and how NHL teams are feeling right now. That Tim Stutzel could be the third best prospect, and then Jamie Drysdale at number four. And again, these lists are very, very accurate, so we could end up seeing this on draft day. But as a guy who is a little bit more reserved on both of these guys, I don't have either of them top five yet. It's a situation where I think it could definitely happen. We've seen a lot of hype for Stutzel, especially after the World Juniors, and the same thing with Jimmy Drysdale having an amazing OHL season and also had a pretty big impact on Team Canada. But it just goes to show how crazy the top five is because even after Alexi Lafreniere, there's no guaranteed picks. Even Quinton Byfield isn't a guaranteed second overall pick right now. There's a couple of scouts that Bob McKenzie mentioned that didn't have him as their second overall guy and there was one scout who didn't even have him in their top five. It really is that vast. We could see a guy like Tim Stutzel going second overall. It could be that wide open. But a guy like Jamie Drysdale coming out in number four just shows how widespread the whole top ten is. But that ends up leading us to my second takeaway in today's video. Going on Quinton Byfield and Lucas Raymond, two guys that could potentially end up dropping. Now, I still think Quinton Byfield is most likely going to be the second overall pick. But again, there was one of those scouts that didn't even have him in their top five, and a couple others that don't think the gap is, is really small whatsoever. A lot of the opinions now, especially as of late since the World Juniors, seem to indicate that there is a huge gap now between Lafreniere and Quinton Byfield, which I don't think is still the case, but a lot of the scouts right now think that. And in that kind of situation, when you have Tim Stutzel, Jimmy Drysdale, all these guys that are rising in the draft rankings, that could create a situation where it's not Alexi Lafreniere versus Quinton Byfield, but rather Quinton Byfield versus a guy like Tim Stutzel. And the same thing also goes for Lucas Raymond, who finds himself at fifth overall rather than number four, number three. This is a guy who a lot of people thought could challenge Quinton Byfield for that second overall position. I currently have him at third overall still as the third best prospect in the draft. But at number five, it is pretty surprising still. You have Jimmy Drysdale and Tim Stutzel ahead of him right now. And again, these are consensus. These are accurate rankings. Lucas, Ray Lucas Raymond could find himself even outside the top five and continue that way. Again, I personally see him as a top three prospect, but again, these are the scouts. These are the guys connected to the NHL teams, and it's looking like right now Lucas Raymond is less likely to be a third overall pick as the days go by. And now that brings us to my third takeaway here in today's video, and it's going to focus on two defensemen who have steadily rose, and especially in this draft ranking, being Jake Sanderson and Caden Gooley. Now, when I was first looking at this draft ranking, it wasn't too insane until we got to the ninth overall pick in Jake Sanderson. Now, as you guys know, I'm a U.S. fan, so when the U.S. players go high, I like to see it. 
but I'm not too sure that Jake Sanderson is the guy to go ninth overall. And he's a guy that is around my 20th range. I don't think he's a bad prospect, but I don't think he's a top 10 one. But Bob McKenzie in this ranking had him at number 9. And a guy who I have always thought has been seriously overrated, one of the most overrated prospect in the draft, that being Caden Gooley, somehow found himself at 12th overall. I don't know how that happens, but it does. Now, the thing with Sanderson is that I think he has played well. I mean, in the USHL, he's been good. I don't think he's been amazing, but he's a guy that can provide some good value defensively and could be a very good two-way guy in the NHL someday. But again, I don't think he's going to be worth a top 10 pick whatsoever. But then we get to Caden Gooley, which I, I, I don't understand how you could have him as one, a first round prospect or top 15. But again, these are accurate rankings. These are consensus ones. And NHL scouts right now see him as a top 15 prospect. Now again, I can see how you could have Sanderson top 10. I personally do not agree with it whatsoever, but he has shown some flashes and defensively, I think he can be very steady in the NHL someday. Then we go to Caden Gooley and I don't understand what is happening here whatsoever. Kanan Gooley, if I had one word to explain him, would be fine. He is a fine defenseman, fine at skating, fine puck skills, is fine defensively. There is nothing special about Kanan Gooley in my opinion, at least from what I've seen so far. His point production has not been good, and his underlying numbers have not been good. He is six foot three, and I think that's one of the only reasons he's top 15 right now. There, I said it. I don't think Kane and Gooley is all that great, and I don't think she'd even touch the first round at this point. But speaking of goaltending, I'm now gonna get into my fourth takeaway in Bob McKenzie's draft rankings, that focusing on Yaroslav Askarov. Now, when I first saw this article, I'm like, okay, Yaroslav Askarov is gonna be a big wild card here. He's a guy that I personally have, I think at like number 12 or number 13, and I don't usually put goalies in my top 15 ever, even my first round. Askarov though is a truly special goalie prospect, and he's a guy that I personally wouldn't be too surprised if he found himself into the top five. There is some teams that badly need goaltending. But again, these rankings are very accurate and are very depictive of what we'll see on draft day. And Bob McKenzie officially had Yaroslav Askarov at 10th overall. Now, that's not to say that Askarov won't go top five because there's a lot of unpredictability there, but it seems like the stock on Askarov isn't as high as I personally thought. Now, I think this 10th overall ranking is very indicative of his World Juniors because his World Juniors were not good whatsoever. But even then, as a guy who isn't as high on Askarov as some others, to blame Askarov for the World Juniors and to put his stock low because of like two games he played as an 18-year-old or 17-year-old is a little bit unfair in my opinion. I mean, Askarov is still freaking incredible and one of the best goalie prospects we've seen since Vasilevsky and Carey Price. But I think the 10th overall spot is pretty perfect for him. I'm kind of surprised because it kind of lines up with where I think he will go. But even with that, there will be a lot of teams that will absolutely die for a goalie prospect like that. He will still take quite a bit, quite a few years to actually get to the NHL, but for a team that needs goaltending, there's no better option in the draft right now and it's not even close. And now we're getting into my fifth takeaway. And this is where I start to get a little bit ranty here. Just just, uh, just a smidge, just a, just a tiny bit. For my fifth takeaway, there is going to be a lot, and I mean a lot, of steals in this draft. By the way these rankings look, and if they are 100% accurate, which is going to be pretty close, there is going to be a lot of steals in that second, third and fourth round. To name a few guys who are in that late second and will be in that third and fourth round, you have guys like Jan Mizek, Ronnie Hervinen, Zion Nybeck, Kasper Samanteval. There's going to be a lot of talent to choose from. If your team is out of the playoffs or is in the playoffs, they trade their first round pick, it's still pretty likely that you could get some steals in this draft. I mean, last year, we saw guys like Nils Hoglander, Pavel Dorofiev go not too high and end up being really good picks, which I already thought so. But this year, I think could be an even bigger level. And you look at some of the, again, the European talent I just listed. Jan Majic, I have as a top 15 pick. Harvinen, I see as around the top 20. Nybeck, I see as around that same spot too. And Simontoval, I see as a first round pick right now. There is a lot of low stock on these European guys that I think will bite some of these teams going forward. 
And just listing even more guys that were ranked in the second round or lower, you have guys like Emil Andre, Marat Kuznetsov, you have Helge Granz, Martin Kromiak, who's been fantastic in the OHL. There's going to be some amazing, amazing options, and all of these guys are European prospects. I'm just noticing that now. It seems like throughout this whole Top 62 that there is a lot of stock on North American prospects, which is fine, but there's a lot of European guys who I think are going super underrated in this draft. So if your team is heavily scouting Europe, be prepared to get some steals because they will definitely be out there. There could be some in the first round. There could be some in the second round. I mean, you see Anton Lindell as number 11. He should be nowhere near outside the top 10. But that just shows how much European talent is in this draft and how underrated it's going right now. But if this draft ranking really does tell us anything, is that it's going to be a very unpredictable draft, especially from here on out to the rest of the draft day. I mean, 2019 was on a weird level of craziness, but it obviously isn't up to the level of the 2020 talent level. This will be a draft that is amazing and will be filled with unpredictability. I mean, you have a guy like Anton Lindell, who I see as the fourth best prospect, potentially outside of the top 10. So many fantastic steals potentially available. A guy like Tim Stutzel could go a second overall. There's going to be a lot of great storylines to keep up with, and we still got like five more months to go. But with today's video, I need to hear y'all's thoughts down those comments down below. Let me know what you think about Bob McKenzie's draft rankings here today, what your thoughts on them, what you agree and disagree with, and of course, let me know your thoughts on the takeaways for these draft rankings, and what are your takeaways for Bob McKenzie's rankings. But if y'all want some more grab videos just like this one, I would suggest you click on this playlist right here to watch all of my 2020 NHL draft content right in one place. But that'll be it for today, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Comment down below your thoughts on Bob McKenzie's draft rankings and what your takeaways are here today, boys. Share this video with your friends, get the rankings out there, and get the takeaways out there as well. My name is Nathan, and I'll see you on the next video or stream. Goodbye.